in the last video we talked about step three the spiritual principle behind step three was faith and the spiritual principle of step four is courage all men of faith have courage when we ask for god's will in our life then the will of god would be for us to continue and make myself better so i can help other people so next we launched out into a course of rigorous action the first step of which is a personal house cleaning so step four clearly starts on page 64 here the bottom of 63 and the top of 64. next we launch out on a course of rigorous action the first step of which is a personal house cleaning which many of us has never have never attempted Though our decision was a vital and crucial step, it could have little or permanent effect unless at once followed by a strenuous effort to face and to be rid of the things in ourselves which have been blocking us. I'm going to go over four columns in a first step. On the bottom of page 64, we set them on paper. We listed people, institutions, or principles with whom we were angry, and that's a direction. We set them on paper. I'm just going to point out really quickly the pages we're going to be talking about before we start. Now move past page 65. Everybody's familiar with this little diagram right here. I'm resentful at the cause, the effect. Okay, and then you go down to page 66. Move past page 66 to page 67. Referring to our list. The list they're talking about is the first column that we made in step four on page, the bottom of page 64. In dealing with resentment, we set them on paper. We listed people, institutions, or principles to who we are angry. I'm going to try to make this make sense. So now we're back on page 67. So that's what it's talking about, referring to our list again, the list of, that we made on the bottom of page 64, putting out of our minds the wrongs others had had done we resolutely we resolutely look for our own mistakes where had we been selfish dishonest self-seeking frightened though the situation had not been entirely our fault we tried to disregard the other person involved entirely where were we to blame the inventory was ours not the other man's when we saw our faults we listed them on paper, and that's the second column. This is a direction on page 67. When we saw our faults, we listed them. We placed them before us in black and white, and that's a direction from the big book. So referring to our list again, then putting out of our minds the wrongs others had done, we looked at this, then we placed them before us in black and white. Those That's another direction from the book. Okay, let's talk about the third column. I'm going to go over the four columns of the fourth step before we talk about this fourth step to give you a prelude of what we're going to be talking about. If we move past six, page 67, look at page 68. We think we think fear ought to be classed with sin. It seems to cause us more troubles. We reviewed our fears thoroughly. We put them on paper. So this is another direction. This is number three. That's the third direction that it's giving us. First, we listed people who we were angry at. Then we took a look at our faults and we listed that. Now it's telling me we look at our fears and we put that on paper. So this is the third column. If we move past 68 and go down to page 69, I wonder if that's a coincidence that they put this sexual inventory on page 69. I don't know, but that's a big joke in meetings. This is the fourth and final column of a fourth step. We want to stay out of this controversy. We do not want to be the arbiters of anybody's sex conduct. We all have sex problems. We'd hardly be human if we didn't. What can we do about them? We reviewed our conduct over the past years. Where had we been selfish, dishonest, or inconsiderate? Whom had we hurt? Did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? We got this all down on paper and looked at it. So that's the fourth direction. So we looked at what we had done wrong in relationships with others. We got it all down on paper. In this way, 
we try to sh shape a sane and sound idea of our future sex life. But anyway, I just want to go over the four things quickly before we talk about step four. In dealing with the resentment, we set them on paper. We listed people, institutions, or principles to who we were angry. So that's number one. This is the first direction, number one. We move past 65. These three columns right here, I'm resentful at the cause it affects. All that is just encompassing the first column in dealing with the resentment. This, these three columns right here are helping us understand, simplifying, maybe new people that are new don't know what a resentment is. So my wife, I'm angry, pride and personal, my employer, self-esteem, all these things are helping me identify with what a possible resentment is. Mrs. Jones, personal relations. A lot of people will tell you in meetings, or you hear it so many times, and this is one of the controversial things that we're going to talk about in step four, is that this isn't a fourth step. This is just the beginning where in dealing with resentment, we listed people, institutions, or principles who we were angry. So now we, we understand people, employer institutions to who we were angry. So this, this sheet right here helps me understand what a resentment is that we're listing in number one. Okay, let's go, let's move past this, 67. Okay, and we're going to number two. Okay, this is number two. When we saw our faults, referring to our list, putting out of our minds the wrongs others had done. We resolutely looked for our own mistakes. Where had we been selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and frightened? Though a situation had not been entirely our fault, we tried to disregard the other person's involvement entirely. Where were we to blame? The inventory was ours, not the other man's. When we saw our faults, we listed them. We placed them before us in black and white. That's number two. That's the second direction. Referring to our list. I know I keep repeating myself. The first list about resentment. So this is the second instruction. Now let's move to page 68. We think fear ought to be classed with stealing. It seems to cause more trouble. We reviewed our fears thoroughly. We put them on paper, okay? So this is the third instruction. We put them on paper. It talks about fear very briefly. It seems to cause more troubles. Fear caused more trouble in my life than anything. And I thought fear of, like of the boogeyman, but no. When I took a real close look at myself, the fear was inferiority. How I thought about myself. The way I thought about myself was the cause of all my actions and the things I did in my life. So that was the biggest thing I learned, was that it was the inferiority. Okay, let's move past 68. Down to 69. Here's a joke. This is a sexual, sexual inventory. We all have sex problems. We'd hardly be human if we didn't. What can we do about them? We reviewed our conduct over the past years. Where had we been selfish, dishonest, or inconsiderate? Who had we hurt? Did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? We got this all down on paper and looked at it. Okay, so that's the fourth instruction. We, Where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? Referring to our relationships with other people. We got this all down on paper. That's the fourth instruction. There are no other instructions. Let's roll back. Okay, there was the fourth, page 69. Okay, let's roll back. There's the third, page 68. Okay, the second one, putting out of our minds the wrongs others had done. Okay, that's number two. We placed them before us on black and white. Okay, let's go back. If this was a complete inventory, then we wouldn't be finished. Then what about these directions they're giving us? So we can't ignore that. Okay, so if people tell you that this is a force strip, then then we're not finished. Okay, then what about the directions? Okay, roll back to one. We listed people, institutions, or principles to who we were angry. Number one. Okay, I'm gonna go over a cheat sheet that I designed really quickly to to try to simplify it. But I wanted to go over those four things, and you can you can look through your book and read that, and maybe be like, wow, I've never seen that before. But that's the intention of this channel. I'm going to point out things that maybe we have never seen in the book before because we've heard people say things in meetings 
they used to hold up the big book in the, in the meeting that I first started in recovery and they used to say, this is the bullshit suit. So unless it's in the book, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but this is a suggestion of the book. And other people might suggest things that may not be in the book and that may be good for you. I don't know, I'm not the judge of that. I'm just gonna point out things in the book that maybe we've never seen before. Okay, this is a cheat sheet to show us, help us uh, illustrate what the suggestions of the big book of how to do a four step. This excerpt is designed to show one alcoholic talking to another alcoholic, exactly how the big book suggests to do a four step inventory. The fourth step is compo composed of four separate columns, and there are four separate directions that are given in writing. We will go over all four of these and point out the pages and the exact direction given. This is the framework of how to do a fourth step inventory. Everybody's inventory will look different, but understanding the framework is important to show other alcoholics. I want to make an important note. Everything that it is that is on the bottom of page 64 and the entire page of 65 is all encompassed in the first column. This will be made clear in the excerpt. The definition of resentment means reoccurring feelings. You do not necessarily have to be angry. Okay, let's look at the first column, number one, bottom of page 64. In dealing with resentment, we set them on paper. We listed people, institutions, or principles with whom we were angry. The three columns on page 65 is just an example to help the reader understand what resentment is and is only encompassed in the first column, I'm resentful at the cause and effects. These three columns right here, I'm resentful at the cause affects my. It's just an example to help somebody understand what a resentment is and only is only encompassed in the first column. We listed people, institutions, principles, people, Mr. Brown, Mrs. Jones, institution, my employer, Okay, so this is this three things right here is not a fourth step. It's just to help me understand what resentment might be. I want to make that very clear. And that's what this little worksheet diagram is saying. This is just the first column, that's all. Okay, let's move back to page 67. Referring to our list again. They're talking about the list we made in number one on the bottom of the page of page four of page sixty-four. In Dylan Resent, we said them on paper, we listed people. So this second one is in conjunction with what with the first one, referring to our list. Because my first inventory was only what everybody did wrong to me. So now we're gonna look at it from a different perspective. Putting out of our minds the wrongs others have done, we resonantly look for our own mistakes. Where have we been selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and frightened, though a situation had not been entirely our fault, we tried to disregard the other person's involvement entirely. Where were we to blame? The inventory was ours, not the other man's. When we saw our faults, we listed them. We placed them before us in black and white. Okay, and that's column two here, the third paragraph of page 67. The third paragraph of page 67. Referring to our list, again, putting out of the, out of the minds of wrongs others done, we resonantly look for our own mistakes. Where had we been? Selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and frightened. Though a situation had not been entirely our fault, we tried to disregard the other person's involvement entirely. Where were we to blame? The inventory was ours, not the other man's. When we saw our faults, we listed them, we placed them before us in black and white. Okay, so that's the second column. Let's take a look at column three, the top of page 68. Number three. Sometimes we think fear ought to be classed with stealing. It seems to cause more trouble. We reviewed our fears thoroughly. We put them on paper. Even though we had no resentment in connection with them, we asked ourselves why we had them. That's number three. So that's another direction from the book. We put them on paper. Even though fear had no connection with the resentment, which is a very important note. And today I understand that fear gave me more trouble than anything ever in life. And I always thought fear is like the boogeyman but I realized that was my inferiority. The way I thought about myself dictated all my actions and all the things I had done in life. So that was a very important thing for me to understand in this short, but very impactable dealing with fear. It seems to cause more trouble. Okay, let's take a look at column four, page 69. That was a joke in early on in meetings. Why is the sexual inventory on page 69? 
Okay, let's take a look at it on the worksheet. We all have sex problems. We'd hardly be human if we didn't. What can we do about them? We reviewed our conduct over the past years. Where had we been selfish, dishonest, or inconsiderate? Whom had we hurt? Did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? We got this all down on paper and looked at it. And that's a, that's a direction. It's giving us a suggestion. Okay, so that's the fourth column here. Just, we all have sex problems. We'd hardly be human if we didn't. What could we do about that? We reviewed our conduct over the past years. Where have we been selfish, dishonest, or inconsiderate? Whom have we hurt? Did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? We got this all down on paper and looked at it. Okay? Okay, you can take a picture of this worksheet if you like. If you read this in conjunction with the pages of the big book, and they're all listed here, the pages, it might make a little bit more sense. I know I'm oversimplifying it, but this might help you to understand the four different columns, which we see that first part, the first part of the book on page 65, only has three little columns here, and this is just helping us understand what's right here on the bottom of page 64, what a resentment is. This isn't three columns where I, I wrote down Mr. Brown, the cause, effects, and then I wrote this down, and then that's three columns on the fourth step. This is just to help me understand, and I've repeated that maybe too many times, but I want everybody to understand that. This is just to help us understand what's encompassed in just this first column. So the first column is who I'm resentful towards. Then the second column is my part. Then the third column is fear. And the fourth column is a sexual inventory. And if you read this along with what's in the book, hopefully that'll make sense. Okay, so now maybe I want to say a little bit about step four. It's been very lengthy. It's moved past this. So it's clear to see that's where step four begins. And let's go to the very end here. At 69. And then we're on page 70, and then page 71, down to page 72, into action. Having made our personal inventory, what shall we do about it? We have been trying to get a new attitude, a new relationship with our Creator, and to discover the obstacles in our path. We have admitted certain defects. We have ascertained in a rough way the trouble, what the trouble is. We have put our finger on the weak items in our personal inventory. Okay, I wanna make a quick statement. When we get to step 10, it says not all inventory is done in red ink. And what that means is that we're not, we're not supposed to look at everything that's just bad. An inventory is supposed to be for me to enhance what's good and remove what doesn't work anymore in life. Character defects that we used to have, like anger and violence, those things might have benefited us in a certain way. And today we're getting rid of what might not work in a normal society, which, which, which things like tools I used before. So I want everybody to understand that. You might hear somebody at me and say, I have to change everything. And these people make these statements. No, that's not true. The big book is suggesting I don't change everything. I keep what's good in me. I'm looking at that what, what's good and I discard what's bad. So I'm not changing everything. There's good in me that, that just needs to be enhanced. I don't need to get rid of all about me. So it's clear to see that everything that's on the bottom of page 63, 64, begins step four. And step four ends on page 72, the chapter into action, how it works. Okay, now these are about to be cast out. This requires action on our part, which when completed will mean that we have admitted to God, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our, our defects. This brings us to step five in the program of recovery mentioned in the preceding chapters. So as I promised, we're gonna go over the pages in the book and where they're at, and the spiritual principle behind step four is courage. In the next video, we're gonna talk about five. Let's talk about the ending of step four really quick after this inventory. God alone can, can judge our sex situation. Counsel with, with persons is often desirable, but we let God be the final judge. And there's another statement similar to step three, where we want to do things with other people. It's suggesting for us to meet God alone. We realize that some people are fanatical about sex and others are loose. Okay, what they're saying is that if I ask one person, they might say, oh my God, you've done too much. And you, and you might ask another people and they might say, don't worry about it. So we avoid 
hysterical thinking. Suppose we fall short of these chosen ideals and stumble. Does this mean we're going to get drunk? Some people tell us so, but this is only half truth. It depends on us and our motives. If we are sorry for what we have done and have the honest desire to let God take us to, to better things, we believe we will be forgiven and will have learned our lesson. If we are not sorry, our conduct harms, harms others, we are quite sure to drink. We are not theorizing. These are, these are facts out of our experiences. To sum up about sex, we earnestly pray for the right ideal and for guidance in each questionable situation, for sanity and for the strength to do the right thing. If sex is very troublesome, we throw ourselves harder into helping others. Okay? So it's just giving me the end to sum it all up. Just like we talked about in step three, I'm asking God to remove me of my difficulties so, so that they can bear witness to others of thy love, thy light, and I'm paraphrasing. So now we went to step four and it's saying something similar. God help me so it can be witnessed to, to some other people. And those are those are just some of the things I, I really want to point out here that the big book always gives us the solution. We've talked about the problem for quite some time here in the inventory and at the end of the inventory, this is what it's telling me. To sum it up about sex, we earnestly pray for the right ideal, for guidance in each questionable situation, for the sanity and the strength to do the right thing. If sex is very troublesome, we throw ourselves harder into helping others. So now it's giving me a solution. So I hope you enjoy this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about step five. And the spiritual principle behind step five is integrity. So the reason why we speak to God and another human being is to make sure that the information that we're giving is correct. The reason why we don't just talk to God by himself is because we need another human being to make sure that the information that we're going to step six and seven is correct. Because I can go to my sponsor and I can tell my sponsor, hey, I got this inventory and I did this and that. My, like I said before, my first inventory was all the things everybody in the world had ever did wrong to me. So I take that to a sponsor and say, hey, wait a minute, this is horse puppy. We need to go back and we got we to look at our part. And this is a process that we that take that that we're going to learn in a lifetime to immediately take a spot check inventory and go. Oh wait a minute, you know what's my part in this situation? Instead of constantly looking at looking at the faults of others, so we're beginning that process here. So it's clear to see on chapter six here into action. This brings us to step five. Okay, we're going to talk about that in the next video. Thank you. I hope I hope you enjoy this video. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And don't forget to donate to the Seventh Tradition to keep this material going. Thank you, and God bless.